until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times, they keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manna that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands towards them and say, Precious Heavenly Father, I am yours. I am here for you. Take a hold of my spirit. Take a hold of my soul. Take a hold of my body. Feel me and do with me what you walked in me to will and to do. Father, I acknowledge that it is you who is at work in me both to will and to do. I am here because you made me willing. And now, Father, I yield completely to you. Do with me what I'm here for. You know why I'm here. But I have come. Do with me what you brought me here for. I submit completely to your perfect plan, purpose, and pleasure for my life. I am here for you. Would you please speak in other of 60 seconds? Liga proto so pro de 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 ba 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 ya. Mele ko raba se mere ge dele bo bo shakra mando. Le bro ko raba se te kreste frige dele ba 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 ya. Reke te la masi frige dele bro ko doma hala basatina. Ba 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 
the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, you may be seated. Why are we here? For it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So why are we here? Why did God save us? Why was Jesus born? In fact, why was there ever God? <laughs> if that's too much to ask, why did God create? Why did God create the universe? I think that's the, how far rich you can get. That's how far you can go with God. You, 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 because next to God is his creation. So you may not be able to ask why does God exist, but you can ask why did God create everything? Beholding the invisible. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Are you still here? So, why? Listen folks. It takes knowing and understanding. It takes knowing and understanding the whys of things to be serious with God with the things of God with life and to appreciate God it takes knowing the wise of things it takes no understanding the wise of things, right? To be serious with God, with things of God, with life, and to appreciate God. It takes knowing why. Are you listening to me? This is so serious. It takes knowing why. Oh, why did you, why did you ask me to go to this place? And he doesn't say anything to you. So you are there interpreting it your way. Forming emotions of different types and kinds. And then suddenly God comes to you and says to you, you can about Job. Job was everywhere in his mind. His emotions were everywhere. He was saying things that were way above his head. His friends were not helping mother. The wife wasn't happy. His situation wasn't happy. So Job was saying all manner of things. When God spoke to Job the reason for things, Job said, I repent in dust and ashes. Listen, I said it is crucial to the success of a child. I told you, I told you in, in, in the Christmas service, I said it is crucial to the success of a child of God, to the new creation, to know the wise, to know God's purpose in all of the actions of God. I said that, right? To know his purpose for all his actions. Why did God say what he said? Why is God doing what he's doing? Why, why, why? I'm always there. Are you here? Hello? Are you still here? Now listen carefully. Listen. I'm here very well. In my quest for answers... I came to the Lord and said, Lord, you have given me a couple of whys for different things. But the biggest, the biggest of them all is why did you create? Why did, cre why did you bring creation into being, into existence? And then the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, when you want to know why God created what he created and why the why of everything, the highest why of all the whys, 
It's a stand in Genesis to ask, look in Revelation to get the answer. Did you hear that? He said to know the highest why among the whys of things because there's the greatest why of all things. There are many why, 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 many whys. <laughs> but the biggest of them to know that is that you start in Genesis and look into Revelation because they always say and it's actually correct many times. To know the purpose of things. Look at the end of things. Because the end always communicates the purpose. All right? The end always communicates the purpose. And you have to hear these people because it is consistent with the character of God to communicate the end from the beginning. Come on, you didn't know that? God communicates the end from the beginning. That's why it's good to stand at the beginning and look at the end from the beginning. Okay, look at it this way. Book of Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Verse 10. I want you to look at the screen. Hey, everybody please, the screen. Okay. 46, verse 10. I want you to read it. One, two, read. Did you just say that? Declaring the end from the beginning. So if you, if you go by Blico, it is declaring from Genesis the end, which is Revelation. And so many scholars will tell you to really understand the book of Genesis, study Revelation. And to understand Revelation, study Genesis. I know you say, ah, how is it related? I don't believe. <laughs> Neither did I say I believe. I only just said many scholars said. So I didn't say I believed. Oh, I believe still. I didn't say it. I only just said it. Said. This is so sacred. Should I cancel it? It's up to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, it doesn't mean everything in that place will just reflect this place. No, they are, they, the major truths are here. And the major truth for this side, you find them here, is the truth actually. In that regard. It's only in Revelation you find what happened to the earth in Genesis. John said there was war in heaven. There was war in heaven. It says, Satan with his angels were thrown out. Oh, oh. So they took rebellion to the heavens. It says that Michael and his angels fought. That's not what's to come. That was what happened before the story of Genesis. No, it's in your Bible. You haven't read that? You must have read that. Even though you don't read as much, you must have read that one at least. Hallelujah. He didn't say and there, there shall be war in heaven. He said there was war in heaven. There was. And when did this happen? At Genesis. He said there shall be war in heaven. So even though they call it eschatology, it's, that's, not, that's not an eschatological uh, uh, statement. It's in the past. It did happen. Hallelujah. Declaring the end from the beginning. And so I said, Lord, why did you create the universe, the heavens? Because remember, God is before his creation. 
Do you understand that? God is before his creation. God didn't come after creation. God came before creation. Because if God came after creation, then that would be something that's superior to God. And the Bible tells us he is the beginning. And that one says he is before the beginning. And he's after the end. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So why did you create everything? And the first answer that will come to your mind is if people can't see what God is doing. That statement will never leave my spirit. If people can't see what God is doing, if they can't see it, if they can't see it, if they can't know it, they will build their lives on assumptions, on speculation. If they can't see it, if they can't see it, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. They stumble all over themselves. And now it says they cast off restraints. They throw off every rule over their lives. If people can't see what God is doing. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you see what God is doing? And so, why I was weighing my spirit to really know why this whole thing, but you know, something very important happened. God spoke to me and said, by the time you know the answer, I hope you know that there will be nothing else to know. I said, okay. He said, when you know the answer, there will be nothing else to know. I said, okay, what then happens to me? Will, I, will that not be the end? He says, no. That means you will now move to the realm of visions and revelations. Because that's where you start encountering challenging things that will make you want to know God himself more. No longer his creation. When you know the why of everything, what else is there to know? That's what God told me. So when you know why, I hope there will be nothing else to know. So that means you are, read, you are reading yourself for the realm of visions and revelation. We start encountering angels. Angels of different types and kinds with different names and titles. Because there are realms. Because all we ever, we always think or we ever thought is that it is earth or it's hell, earth, heaven. And that's all there is. You are not aware there are, there are realms in between all of these things. And many of you think that the angels are just angels that minister to us, angels minister in heaven, angels on earth, that's all. No. <laughs> that's not all. There are angels you have never heard of that are not written about, but they do exist. There are angels that are in control of continents with specific names. There is the angel of the water, angel of fire. There is the angel in charge of fire that has the ability and the authority to save inside fire. We don't know these things. Okay. You know, some time ago, someone said something. Someone said, uh, that the when Nebuchadnezzar said the uh, one like the son of man in the fire, he was referring to perhaps Jesus. But it was never Jesus at the time. And many claimed that was the pre-incarnate. There's no pre-incarnate anything. There's no pre-incarnate anything. People just say things that are very wrong. That, that you can't prove from scripture. There's no such pre incarnate anything that, oh, there was the pre incarnate revelation of Jesus Christ. There was nothing like that. Where was he living at the time? Pre incarnate? That's not correct.
because of how it was described. That, that one that Daniel saw, look, it looked exactly like what John described. It's not correct until you study your Bible closely. Book of Revelation chapter 14. I'll show you this one. From verse 14. Just for, for knowledge's sake. From verse 14. And I looked. I want you guys to look at this very well. And I looked. And behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man. Having on his head a golden crown. And in his hand a sharp sickle. Pause. Does that not look like the Son of Man? And you say, that could be referring to Jesus, right? Because I have a golden crown. Jesus wears crowns, not a crown. And this is an angel, yet he's referred to as the Son of Man. Not Jesus. One like the Son of Man. This is an angel. Not Jesus. But I'll show you. And I look and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man. Don't you see a metaphor? A comparison? One like unto, so it's not the son of man, like the son of man. This is an angel being described. But there's more, I can't do that tonight. Okay, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Jesus doesn't wear just a golden crown. Jesus, is, Jesus wears crowns, but this one has a golden crown. Next verse, let's just go quickly. And another angel came out of temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. The angel is talking to the one that, that's like unto the son of man, right? Trust in thy sickle. No angel commands Jesus. Come on. It's all right. Trust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is come, right? Or is right. Next verse. And he that sat on the cloud, trust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Did Jesus not say the reapers are angels? Did he not say that the reapers are angels? He said, let me tell you the meaning of the parable. In Matthew chapter 30. He said, I'll tell you the meaning of the parable. He said, the, the seed are the children of the kingdom. The third children of the, of the wicked one. He that sowed the third, the wicked one. Right? And he said, the reapers are angels. The harvest is the end of the world. So angels are reapers. So the one that was like the son of man with golden crown that came to reap is an angel because the angels are reapers. Jesus is a reaper. But yet he was discovered one like the son of man. So when the brother saw about talking about the son of man in the fire, it wasn't Jesus, it was an angel. I know you, I think you, I, many of you think you know something. Next verse. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. Have you seen that now? Another angel. But the first angel was discovered as like a son of man. And he didn't say that one was an angel. He said like the son of man. Then now he said another angel. So that means the first was an angel. Next verse. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire. This is the angel Nebuchadnezzar saw. Another angel came out of order, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice, cried to him, and, and with a loud voice, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the chapsicle, saying, Trust in thy chapsicle and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are, full, are fully ripe. Praise God. So there is an angel of the fire, there is the angel of the water. That's why God said, When you go to the fire, you will not be born because I have an angel of fire. So there's an angel that has power over fire. Now, if the angel has power over fire, it means if he enters the fire, nothing happens to him. That was the angel that brought out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That looked like the son of man. The day I first studied it, I trembled. So an angel can have power over fire. There's also the angel that has power over water in the same revelation. When you have come to know, these are the guys you start dealing with. When you have come to know, you start dealing with these guys. And they don't look normal. These angels. 
You worship them. The book of Revelation, all the things you saw, it wasn't Jesus that showed Jesus, uh, showed John. It was an angel. When the angel was not showing John everything, John wanted to worship and he said, I'm a servant like you. It wasn't Jesus. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ, not Jesus himself. With God sent by an angel to show to John his servant. Read your Bible. It wasn't Jesus who was showing John those. It was an angel of God. It's there. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation of Jesus Christ. With God sent by, a, by his angel to his servant John. It's there. I don't know what you have read. And they said John the revelator. John is not the revelator. He is the one that was sent with the revelation. He didn't, he's not the revelator. I don't know how people give titles to things and they say this and that, John the revelator, and say, hi, it's John the revelator. Jesus was the one showing Jesus. No, it wasn't true because when John was there to worship the angel, he said, I'm an angel, a servant. Don't worship me. Worship Jesus, guy. For the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Okay. Okay. Let's, 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 let's slow down a bit. Let's slow down a bit. Thank you, Lord. Can I just show you something in Revelation chapter 1? Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 1. I, would, I want you guys to read it. One, two, read. Chapter 19, verse 10. Let's start from verse 7, please, into verse 10. <laughs> One, two, read. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. So it wasn't Jesus. I have the testament of Jesus, which was given to him in chapter 1 earlier. Finish it. So you know who took John through Revelation? An angel. An angel. Showing him things to come. An angel. Telling John what to write and what not to write. So the first person he saw was Jesus. That was all. He never saw him again. He began to see him in different forms. Why there was, there, was, there was silence in heaven. There was somebody needed to open the school. Yes, he was seeing things, but it wasn't Jesus taking John, showing him things. It was an angel. So how could Nebuchadnezzar have seen God's child when God didn't have any? Because until he was born, no man ever saw anyone called Jesus. Uh, up until he was born of Mary, he was always what? The word, the word, the word, the word. And then finally one day, the word became flesh. So who was it that he saw? Hallelujah. Did you get that? Yes, sir. So why did God create everything? And that will bring us back to why you, why me, why us, and why the fire and the glory. I'm very inquisitive when it comes to these things of the truth, the things of this world. I'm never satisfied with things. Just, just tell me, Jesus died. I want to know why he died. He was born. I want to know why he was born. 
That's how I think. It's not something I, I learned. It was given to me to think that way because of the never before sins. I, I just can't take it. And you come and say, um, you know, I, I, I query a lot of things. 40 days of thunder, uh, thunder fasting. Why? 20, 20 something hallelujahs. Why? I am not saying God didn't tell you, but why? So you don't have to know why, then I'm not doing it. Say so you don't always have to know. Yes, I understand that there, there are times you just have to do because God says do it. I'll tell you what, why, but just do it. Many times you don't even remember to ask why. They're not even at that level to ask why. We, we are just glad that we, we saw something. We heard something. God told me when you see vision, speak in tongues to understand the vision. Have you noticed many of you, you write down vision without the interpretation of visions? He said, let him who speaks in tongues ask, pray that he may interpret. Many of you don't do that. I saw a vision. Okay, in the vision, I was, I was flying. Hush, the vision was so sweet. But suddenly I just fell down and I woke up. I didn't know what happened. I'm now worried. Oh, you were flying and you fell down. Do you know that you're flying to your death? And God stopped you. Every flying is not, it's not promotion. And then, in your, in, your, in your limited interpretation, you say, ah, I was about hitting it big in the name of the spirit. <laughs> yeah, you were really about to hit it big. The young man said, gone too soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said, Lord, why did you create? And finally, he showed me this beautiful scripture. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Have you found it? I want you guys to read. Now remember, this question of why was in Genesis. The answer is the end, revelation. And look at what it says. One, two, read. Stop. For thou hast created all things, full stop. So what follows? Why did you create all things? No, relax. This is not all there is to tell you. So why did you create all things? And he says, this is why. I want to read. So he created all things for his pleasure. Is that correct? He created all things for his pleasure. Say, that's why? Yes. But the question then is, what is the pleasure of the Lord? Why did you create? You know, you tell a man, why did you buy a house in New York? So I just, I just bought it for my pleasure. Oh, not for rent? No. Just, I just bought it for my pleasure. Because you say, but we should have, you should have put it out for rent. Say, I have a lot of them. Say, okay, what about this? Say, what would this produce again other than money which others are already producing? This one is for my pleasure. Because the whole idea or the purpose of investment is for pleasure. It's for pleasure. What, is, what do you have money for? Money is for pleasure, ultimately. Money is for pleasure. So when God created everything and saw that it was great, it was for his pleasure. For his pleasure. So, God created all things. He says, thou art worthy. Look at the context. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Okay, let's see from verse 1. From verse 1. Quickly, from verse 1. Because after this one, you see what John says. Look at it from verse 1. After this, after this that means after the whole vision of the rapture. Because now this is the beginning of everything. This is the chapter 4 down to the end of it. Actually, it's about 
the after rapture life. It's a lot. It's a lot. I can't tell you all that today. So chapter one talked about revelation and then the churches and then the, the churches that were addressed and it's, it doesn't just apply to those churches that were mentioned. It applies to the body of Christ in general and then what they must do, what they must do, what this church must do, the seven churches and then it was done right into all the seven churches. Then he says, and after this, that is after everything because he has told us about the, the rapture of the church and what will follow and it gets to chapter four. He says, and after this I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. We said, come up hither and I will show thee this. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Next verse. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. Next verse. And he that sat sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, inside like unto an emerald. Next verse. And round about the throne were four and twenty six, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. The elders, that elder had a crown of gold. The elders had crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and, and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. <laughs> and, the, and the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast as, had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each one of them six wings above him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Next verse. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crown before the throne, saying, Stop, don't, don't move past this for a moment. Please just, um, I want you guys to look at me carefully. Now, the verse before this tells us about those, those four bees that do not rest, right? And always crying, Holy, Holy. And anytime they cry, the angels, the, the four elders, they bow and, they, tr- and, they, and they, they, they trust their crown, right? And he said they rest not day nor night, right? And, and they do everything. Let me ask you. Now, if every time they cry, the elders bow, what do they need to sit for? Because never, they, are not, they are never sitting on the chair. So that means they are never sitting down. Because before they can, it's like saying, sit, stand, sit, stand. Sit. So before they can sit, they already say, holy, holy. And then they, they quickly bow, they remove their crown. And then before they can carry it again, holy. They, so that means... They, they don't need the church. They don't even need to wear the crown because it, it will soon call holy. So, so it's just to hold it. But he said they, they wore it. And they were seated. And then when those ones cried. So that means every... And these ones don't rest. So that means the trophy does not rest at all. Are, are you getting it? And so that's the picture you know what people have about heaven. And I was holy, 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 holy. And every time, boo, it boo, it boo, it boo, it boo, it boo. Now imagine you, you, you got sick for 24 elders. And, and all their lifetime, they always do like this. But that's not exactly what he was saying. Because those elders do sit to hold meetings with God. And when God is talking, those beings are not crying holy, holy, because we will be distracting the meeting. So it doesn't, that's not exactly what John was trying to tell us. What he was trying to let us know was their job. Their job is to sing God's holiness. And they don't grow weary in praising God. Not like they're always praising God. Talking, talking. No, because these creatures, they also eat. So what do they get them to feed? Angels eat. Angels eat. And you know, a lot of you are not, are not aware that even God himself eats. I don't think God, God, God is not a machine. 
God is a person. God is a spirit person. Everything God created was created for his pleasure. The pleasure of the Lord is why he created everything absolutely. Let's begin to equate truth. He created all things for his pleasure? Yes. Isaiah chapter 43. Book of Isaiah. Verse 7. So he said, everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. Now, listen everybody. In um, Revelation, it tells us he's created all things for his pleasure. In Isaiah, it says he created for his glory. So when you substitute truth, you find that first of all, the pleasure of the Lord is the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you an offering for this one. Take your offering for the service. Lord, I give an offering. And this offering has a name. This offering is called fatness and goodness. Fatness and goodness. I, I give fatness, I give an offering of fatness and goodness. By this offering, I declare our souls are sashaded with fatness. Our souls are sashaded with your fatness. I declare our lives are satisfied with your goodness with your longevity with your preservation with your defense with open doors with favor with protection with promotion with ideas with insight with beauty with color with wholeness with your consummate health in the name of Jesus. And this offering, this fatness and goodness shall return to us. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. It shall produce for us the all sufficient kind of life. The God type of life. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Say after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today, I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior. I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins in my soul. I receive eternal life of my spirit. And I declare 
I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the Spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Jelemon gradi so faradiga, libro co se pradina, gaizo frote gelo practice, kazam brodi gabadina, e capate la gloria perisato, e bragina sacradi, meredose frokitaba, rabashi cabela endo cobra iracata, labro co rabacashi, beredidi poso freke dele manda crista, rabababababoso, in the name of Jesus.